Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. What I'm going to take you through now is oxidising primary alcohols. So the primary alcohol that I'm going to use for this, uh, different from the ones you do in the notes at Ashton Six Fun College, this is going to be propan one -ol. So I can tell this is a primary alcohol because the carbon that has the OH group on, that's only bonded to one other carbon and it's also bonded to two hydrogens directly. Now I'm going to react this with acidified potassium dichromate and I'm going to keep that formulae and the reference to the Owen square brackets at the top of the screen all the way through this because it's so crucial to realise that it is acidified potassium dichromate and that slash isn't a or or an instead of, it's part of the formula, it's just the way it's written. But in the equation we're only going to write the O in square brackets to represent it. Now the first kind of oxidation that I'm going to do is going to be under a distillation and it's going to be to turn this uh, primary alcohol, the propan one ol into an aldehyde. Okay, so I've just performed that reaction then. So what I want to draw your attention to is, since this has been an oxidation, what we've definitely changed is our functional group of the OH has now become, and this is on this carbon, so I should really show the whole part of it, has now become this group just here, which is an aldehyde functional group. The C double bond O is referred to as a carbonyl functional group, and you can see that it's directly bonded to the rest of the chain and a hydrogen. And so it's now an aldehyde. Now, specifically as well, can't mention this enough, use the O in square brackets. Instead of writing all of that oxidizing agent formula at the top, I just show the O in square brackets. Now, what I teach students as well, hopefully some of you remember this, is, can we see the water over here? Typically, I'm struggling to find an example where it doesn't hold true, but at A level, whenever you react an alcohol, you always make water. So be it a combustion or an oxidation, typically, Whenever you react to an alcohol, you get water as a product, and that can be a way of trying to remember it. So if you come across an example which doesn't hold true for this, then you know send us a tweet, I'll bring it to lesson. Uh, but otherwise, it's a nice way of remembering to always chuck on the water at the end. Now, what I could have done instead is I could have reacted this alcohol with excess of the oxidizing agent under a reflux. This was very clearly under a distillation. In a distillation, what would have happened is the aldehyde, as it was produced, so our aldehyde over here, as this was produced, it's got a very low boiling point. Now, the reason it's got a very low boiling point is because it's just got permanent dipole-dipole intermolecular forces and some London intermolecular forces, whereas the alcohol over here, because it's got the OH group, that's going to have hydrogen bonding. And so the aldehyde, as it gets formed, has a really low boiling point, so it evaporates, get condensed, cooled, and collected immediately in a distillation. And that prevents it from reacting further. However, if I was to put the alcohol under a reflux, then as soon as the aldehyde gets formed, it's pushed back into the reaction vessel because it's condensed and returned to the vessel immediately, and that causes it to oxidize further. Now, if you want to know more about uh, the difference between a reflux and a distillation, we've got a video for that, and you can click the cards for this video and find that and have a look at it if you want to. But let's have a look at the equation itself. Okay, so here's that equation. Now, just to remind you as well, I know I just said it, but uh, distillation, reflux use for this one. So the reflux is the continuous heating and reheating of a sample where all the vapors released are condensed and returned to the reaction vessel for further reaction. So we've got a reflux taking place here, and we can see now we are using uh, two moles of our oxidizing agent. It is exactly the same one for all of these reactions. Um, it would also give exactly the same color change, which is orange to green. Now, we're using two moles of it here. We're still producing water, which is clear, but have a look at this functional group. It's now completely different. It's now a carboxylic acid. So we've bypassed the alcohol um, into the carboxylic acid, leaving out that aldehyde completely. So we've gone straight through into that. Now, I would need to mention that I am doing this under a reflux, and I would also need to mention that part of that would be an excess of the oxidizing agent, just to make sure that I go all the way through to the carboxylic acid 100%. If you want to test the sample at the end, really to find out if you've got any aldehyde in there, you would need to do uh, some infrared analysis or some uh, mass spectrometry analysis in there. Um, adding in a reagent such as a carbonate just to test for the acid isn't really going to be good enough, and you would also need to leave it for a longer amount of time to make sure not just that you've got um, pure carboxylic acid products and no aldehyde, but also to make sure that that alcohol, that primary alcohol, has reacted completely. Now, the other thing I can do, which isn't necessarily reacting a primary alcohol, is 
I could have taken the aldehyde and turned that into the carboxylic acid. So that's kind of like a third option for this. The aldehyde can still be reacted under a reflux if you put an aldehyde in to start with into uh, this carboxylic acid at the bottom. So just a quick look at that equation as well. There we go. Now you can see I'm using exactly the same oxidizing agent. I know I mentioned that a lot, but I just can't emphasize enough it's exactly the same one every single time. And this time I'm going from the aldehyde straight through to the carboxylic acid. Um, there's no water because I'm not reacting in alcohol. That's a, again, way of remembering it. Um, I'm just chucking in an oxygen, which means I'm oxidizing the material. Um, and you can see functional group wise, uh, very, very clearly for this, I've gone from the aldehyde into the carboxylic acid just there. It's a nice, easy, balanced equation to learn. I hope that clears up how to oxidize the primary alcohols. There is another video as well for oxidizing the secondary alcohols, which does mention what happens with the tertiary. And don't forget there is a reflux and distillation practical comparison video, which is also available on the cards for this video. Um, I'll leave you to the rest of your playlist of now. Happy revising.